All right, guys. Well, it has actually all of a sudden turned into quite a lovely late winter day here. It is the last Sunday in the winter of 2023. That would be Sunday, March 19th. We got the, is that Mr. Wren singing? The Wrens are building their nest in the, remember when we actually got newspapers delivered? I'm sure I'm dating myself. You know these weird looking, like, like these tubes, these weird tube things you still see along mailboxes. Now some of you youngsters might not even know what a mailbox looks like. See, it's these weird things that you see out in the front of houses along the streets. Those are called mailboxes, but next to them are these weird looking tube things. And if you're trying to figure out what those are, they're not birdhouses. They used there used to be this thing called a newspaper. And people would actually come around in the middle of the night and stick newspapers in these little tubes. They've all been abandoned and I'm glad to see the wrens are taking over, but I am clearly getting off uh, off track as I tend to do. So uh now that the biggest party on the planet is winding down and the, all of the party goers are heading out of the great state of Texas back to where they came from. I'm uh, sitting here, I, I haven't been spending much time down in the, uh, down in the depository of Doomer porn known as medium.com. So I'm going through all of my medium digest. So we're going to bring a, a little medium.com doomer porn digest of my own. And I think we're going to look at, let's just take a quick look at three of these pieces. Now I mentioned this fellow, I read a piece from him named Alan Urban. <coughs> it's spelled, you know, U-R-B-A-N, Alan Urban. Um, who writes for medium.com and who this fellow is, he, he writes, I mean, he puts his stuff on medium, but apparently he is, uh, <clears throat> is the head cook and bottle washer at his own Doomer site called Collapse Survivalist.com, although it has the word E. CollapseSurvivalistE.com. I will uh, put the link uh, onto it here. Good Lord, guys. Alan Durbin, uh, whoever this man is exactly, <coughs> he has done his homework. And so you have his, and so his grand opus is this, uh, is this thing that I, I mentioned this in my last video I did about Alan called 10 Reasons Our Civilization Will Soon Collapse. And, uh, and good, I got, guys, this is a book length, uh, epic rant on 10 reasons our uh, civilization will soon collapse. I'm just going to read them real quick. Well, of course, number one being overshoot. Although I've listed overshoot as just one of the many problems humanity is facing, I could argue that overshoot is the only problem we are facing because every other problem on this list is the result of overshoot. So under the umbrella of overshoot, just real quickly, uh, the end of cheap fossil fuels the failure, the failure of green energy, exposing the bright green lies of the, you know, switching over from fossil fuels, which gets us in, ties right into dwindling resources, coming in at number four, number five, topsoil erosion. I thought that would just be one of the number four, but topsoil uh, gets its own special mention. 
Number six, water shortages. Number seven, climate change. Coming in at number seven, you notice climate change is a result of overshoot like every other thing on this list as he says of course biodiversity loss is certainly uh, a direct result of uh, overshoot of course the migrant crisis which we're just seeing the tip of that iceberg and he ends number 10 increasing conflict yep 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 uh, and so then he has this long conclusion which i which i pretty much read i, I would read this conclusion to this but it's pretty much or if you look up the video i've already done on alan durbin you can find this now of course the main difference between me and Alan Durbin is that Alan is a, I don't know whether uh, he uses the word prepper to describe himself. I think he would call himself a survivalist. I mean, the, it, the name of his website is Collapse Survivalist. Uh, so, obviously, the the critical difference between me and Alan Durbin uh, is that Alan thinks, A, that humanity can survive the shitstorm that we both are in 100% agreement is coming, and I guess more importantly that uh, Alan Urban believes that anybody would want to come out of the other end of this bottleneck. You know, I'm taking the late, great Gail Zawacki's approach to this. Uh, you know, in my interview with her, we were talking about this, and she, you know, said something like, uh, I, I don't know when it's coming, but I don't want anything to do with it, and neither do you. And so Gail, she got out. Uh, Gail got out in time, I guess. Uh, so Gail got out, so she didn't get to have to deal with this. But I agree with Gail. Uh, I don't know why anybody on any level would have any desire to be, to be one of the survivors or survivalists or whatever. This is why I am doing absolutely zero to prepare for the collapse. I'm just chronicling it because I think it's an interesting story. But anyway, what I wanted to mention, if you go on, uh, if you go on uh, Alan's excellent website, he has this uh, roundup called Collapse Resources. On this page, I have compiled lists, plural, lists of blogs, documentaries, lectures, interviews, news sites, organizations, podcasts, researchers, and videos about societal collapse. If there are any resources you would like me to add, leave a comment at the bottom of the page. Good Lord, brother. And then he, uh, and, and, and Alan Urban has presented us uh, with one of these, kind of like I think that Gail Zawacki did. If, if you cannot find enough doom and gloom, uh, you know, in the mainstream media every morning now or on medium.com, uh, this man, good Lord, dozens and dozens of doomer porn sites. I want to congratulate Elliot Jacobson, Coming in number two on the, it's not in, it's more alphabetical than anything, and he has it so, uh, <clears throat> Elliot Jacobson's Climate Casino, number two on his list. I should have counted, but you can click on any one of these. Uh, <laughs> I mean, 
it, you, you would think that Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, I have literally heard of about maybe, maybe 30% of these I have ever even heard of after 14 years down here. Haven't heard of, of, of the vast majority of these sites. Uh, I like some of them. Dark Optimism. Um, how about this for a Doomer chick? Desdemona Despair. <laughs> oh, anyway, but I, if you get down near the very, very bottom, you will find this outfit uh, under podcast. Uh, Collapse Chronicles is listed as a uh, as a podcast. Um, so, Alan, if you're listening to this, I don't see Environmental Coffee House on here anywhere. My friend Sandy Shellis. I mean, you need to you need to put Environmental Coffee House on this list. I don't know if Sandy is a podcast. Collapse Chronicles is actually a YouTube channel for Sam Mitchell, a freelance journalist. Yes, a freelance journalist talks about the latest collapse re related news. Uh, and right below Collapse Chronicles, I need to ch check this one out. Crazy Town. Crazy Town equal parts humor and in-depth analysis of overshoot climate change and capitalism. Well, I'm glad to see that uh, at least I came in above our, our, our friend we never talk about. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we don't need to. Uh, then he has links to all, you know, all of these other people that if you haven't heard of all of these guys, Chris Hedges, Chris Martinson, Derek Jensen, James Hansen, Jared Diamond, John Michael Greer, Joseph Tainter, Kevin Anderson, Nate Hagens, Richard Hem, Heinberg, Vaclav Smeal, and William Reese showing up at the very bottom. No, then he, it, this goes on and on, guys, but uh, he covers the one that Sandy, uh, he mentions the one that Sandy just covered uh, a few days ago. All right, but anyway, guys, anybody thinking they're not getting enough doom and gloom on Collapse Chronicles, or medium.com or the mainstream media click on this link that I'll give you and uh, it, we will never see you again have fun send me a postcard okay here's this one this doomer chick I've never heard of Susie Kearley Susie Kearley I guess is uh, somewhat reviewing Greta Thunberg's Greta Thunberg's new book, We're Facing the Collapse of Civilization, warns Greta's new book. Yes, she's particularly zeroing in on this uh, chapter written by this fellow, Eugene Linden. I know, I've heard this name, Eugene Linden. Uh, I wish he had given a little bit more of a bio about him. This is quoting, this is some of the stuff that Eugene Linden writes in Greta Thunberg's uh, new book, which I think is just called The Climate Book, if I'm... Okay, take it away, Eugene Linden. Quote, if we continue along the current path, which we will, and the Earth warms by three degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels, the risk is simply, simply, the collapse of civilization itself. This will be a global calamity marked by financial collapse, mass starvation, mass migration, 
and the descent of many nations into civil disorder. Had governments recognized the gravity of the risk in the early 1990s, this apocalyptic prospect might have galvanized action to contain greenhouse gas emissions and avert potential catastrophe. Close quote. All right, let's see. Uh, what else does he say? Uh, quote, fresh water flooding into the North Atlantic could shut down the global current which keeps much of Europe warm. We don't know when these tipping points might be crossed, but we do know that once crossed, they will be irreversible in any time frame, meaningful to humans. Thank you, Eugene Linden, Susan Kearley, and Greta Thunberg for uh, mapping out her future. So I guess she gives some more quotes. I might have to uh, get around to reading Greta's book. Has anyone out there read Greta's book and would like to make a comment? Should I read Greta Thunberg's new book or does it just sound like a bunch of stuff that I do? But anyway, uh, so I've been combing through all of these new writers, and I like this guy, who I guess is a satirist. You know, good satire is when you cannot tell whether the writer is being ironic or not. That is the definition of good satire. I honestly do not know whether J. Murdoch McKinnis Vasey, the man has four names, J. Murdoch McKinnis Vasey, uh, is, is joking or not. Uh, J. Murdoch has 368 followers. followers. This is his author's bio. Hard times have found us and revenge is on my mind. So this is J. Murdoch McKinnis Vasey in his uh, summing it all up, summing up the Doomer porn. The reduction cometh, the solution to all problems. Okay, these, so there is a solution to all problems. <clears throat> we are all hoping for a solution to the ongoing environmental disaster. There is a solution, but we are not going to like it. The answer is... Fewer people. Well, the only problem I have with Jay Murdoch and the Kenneth is, is, of course, my answer is no people. Uh, is there? There is one answer to every problem, on to the eight billion problems on the planet. We can go from eight billion problems when we go from eight billion to zero problems. But anyway, I'm going to butt out now and uh, let Jay take over from here. The answer is fewer people. And by that, I mean a lot fewer people. A reduction by as much as 75%, resulting in a global population of about 2 billion is needed to create a sustainable world. Just think. Only one in four houses in your neighborhood will be occupied. The end of the housing crisis is in sight. I am sure we will do what we can to avoid this, but as usual, it will be much too late and much too little as water, food, petroleum, and other resources become ever scarcer those with guns and the will to use them will survive, others will 
not. And this is the reason I have no desire to come out of the other end. Uh, one more time. Those with the guns and the will to use them will survive. Others will not. This is not a new or radical idea. It has always been this way. The day will come when we are all MAGA idiots shouting to build a wall. Suicide crosses my mind at this point. Yes, it does, Jay. Uh, the day, when the day comes when we are all MAGA idiots shouting to build a wall, suicide might become uh, the correct option. Military planners around the world have been evaluating scarcity, catastrophe, and mass migration scenarios for a long time now. But it is not the kind of thing one discusses in polite society. You can, however, feel a little safer in your beds tonight knowing that the grown-ups are thinking about this and will come up with a plan. Or maybe that should make you feel less safe? I don't know. The way to a smaller population comes in only two flavors. Fewer births and more deaths. Fewer births sounds better to me, but you know humans, more deaths are bound to be in there too. The reduction in population, we would call it the reduction or just the R, will not be fair. It will not be fair but it will be televised. Those who have done the most damage are the least likely to die. This makes sense. The closer you are to a subsistence level existence, the fewer resources you have to defend yourself with when the walrus comes. So, let us think about how this would play out for the good old USA, the biggest waster of them all. We would negotiate the annexation of Canada. Vegematic uh, was mentioning the annexation of Canada uh, in his rant yesterday. We would negotiate the annexation of Canada Canada has tons of natural resources, a relatively small population, and this is the most important. It is colder. We will all be looking for cooler places, and we could buy Greenland. That's a little nod to Donald Trump saying, why don't we buy Greenland? We make all of Central America a deal they can't refuse. We need their fruits and their labor and the fruits of their labor. They need our protection from us, that is. This is the standard protection racket and we know how to do that. We would also take over Colombia and Venezuela marching powder and oil being American staples, and those poor people certainly need our help to run a democratic society. We are the experts. We will declare the rest of South America a protected nature preserve and implement strict population controls. This way, we can protect the rainforests in Brazil and Paraguay and have environmentally safe access to Chile's reserves of copper and lithium. Lots of good stuff in Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, etc. Also, the population of the new Great Again USA 
G-A-U-S-A, pronounced Yowza, would total about $630 million. The protected areas would add another $400 million. This is about 50% of the $2 billion limit, and it seems fair to me. We leave 50% for everybody else, which seems very generous since we have the overwhelming number of weapons. And by the way, America would be great again. USA, USA, USA. You may have noticed that in this plan, not a single American has to be reduced. This means that the rest of the world will have to reduce by 86% rather than 75%, just a little bit more. The big question is, of course, how are we going to get them to do it? A subject for another day. There you go. Let's all clap for, uh, let's all clap for, uh, J. Murdoch McKinnis Vasey. Yep, 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 yep. All right, excuse me, little dog, but with that, I gotta wrap this up because, uh, it is actually getting to be a fine Sunday afternoon. I am exhausted. You're saying goodbye a little too early. Are you just telling the folks bye? Uh, Sancho Panza is already waving goodbye. Uh, it's actually turned into a fine Sunday afternoon. Tell the folks goodbye. Because a little dog and I, we're going to go fire up the grill and... Uh, find some factory farmed fellow earthling to uh, invite to dinner. I highly suggest you get out there and fire up the Barbie while you still can. Bye guys.